So a question that I hear people asking all the time when they're looking to get into pen testing is, do I need to know how to code? Now, personally, I don't think the answer to that question is as easy to answer as a simple yes or no. So here we have this video explaining my personal thoughts and opinions on that. So I know people who pen test who are you know really great at coding. They do all sorts of programming projects or maybe have some sort of background in computer science or software development. And then I know other people who do pen testing and they don't really know how to program very well. They probably don't write any scripts or anything of that nature. And I don't think that there's necessarily anything wrong with either of those two answers. I think that within pen testing, you can choose to specialize in a lot of different things. But I think no matter what you choose to specialize in, what kind of applications or targets you're used to attacking, I think you do need some basic programming knowledge, but not necessarily the same working knowledge that a developer would have. So I have a few different examples in the way I like to think about this. So the first thing would be identifying new vulnerabilities. If you're looking to find new exploits and new vulnerabilities in you know different applications, whether they're web applications or some sort of desktop applications or, or whatever it could be, firmware, anything, uh, you really need to know and understand that target very well. Uh, you might need to understand it as well or better than the developers do because that's how you would be identifying these big you know, high reward vulnerabilities. In order to do that, you truthfully need to know that target very well, which means knowing whatever languages that target is programmed in very well as well. So that would be a one use case where knowing a programming language could be very important. Although it doesn't always apply in your very average pen testing sense. Like for example, you see a web page with some PHP parameters. Anyone can go through and fuzz those PHP parameters with some basic techniques with like burp suite or something like that, throw a bunch of random characters at it and hope to get some sort of error message, right? And if you do, maybe you could just go through and exploit that uh, SQL injection or whatever you may find without understanding the programming language that's used in the back end to handle those statements. You certainly can do that and that is very viable and many people do do that. Uh, and that's very common with more black box testing where you don't have access to the source code. but if you don't understand the language uh, in depth, you could miss a lot of things that would be more language specific, right? Or uh, specific to certain libraries of that language would be easier to overlook if you're not comfortable with that language itself. And I see that a lot with web applications, right? For example, uh, I'm someone who's not very strong in testing web applications. I can definitely do a lot of the basics, you know, your OWASP top 10 kind of stuff. But as far as some of the more complex web vulnerabilities, currently that's not something that I'm very comfortable with. But even, you know, not knowing a lot of those programming languages for web stuff like JavaScript is something I'm, I'm not great with at all. I can still find a lot of those vulnerabilities, right? I don't need to know PHP to find some of those common vulnerabilities. But somebody who knows those languages better than me is much more likely to find those complicated and high reward vulnerabilities than I would be to find them, right? But of course, that's really kind of specific to application pen testing. Now, even if you're just focusing more on the network pen testing side of things, and you don't really work with a lot of code, at the end of the day, you still do inadvertently through exploit code, right? So, you know, of course, uh, if you're not familiar with programming, you wouldn't have written a lot of your own tools, but you still need to exploit vulnerabilities. So what do we all do? We use, you know, Metasploit or we use um, some exploits we found online in a GitHub repository or something like that, right? I'm sure you're all familiar with the workflow of, you know, find a vulnerable version of software that's running, find the associated CPEs, find the exploit code online, download it and run it against the target. Boom. Now you have root. All is fine and great, right? Well, I mean, that is good if it's something like hack the box or your home lab where there's no consequences if you break something, right? Uh, you just download that random code and run it uh, and, and you get root and that's perfect. And that now you're done. You've rooted the box. But on a real pen test with a client and a, a real engagement, you can't just do that. You need to have some understanding of how that exploit works, what the potential consequences of exploiting that could be. And also you need to know how that exploit code is actually written. If you didn't read that exploit code and you just blindly ran it on a client's environment, I would say that's extremely irresponsible and you definitely should not be doing that. Uh, it's just too much of a risk. You don't know if there are some sort of uh, backdoors in that exploit code or if it is malware in of, in of itself and it exposes the client to some sort of breach because of something that was done in the process of exploiting that vulnerable feature. If you don't have the ability to even just read through that code and understand what it's doing, you probably should not be running it in a real environment because 
that could cause a lot of problems. And if you run some random exploit code and can't explain what it did, and now you brought down a production server on a client's environment, I can promise you that's probably going to be a pretty bad day for you. Of course, you know, those kind of things do happen. But if you if you do break something or cause some sort of loss of data, just because you didn't read through an exploit code and just randomly ran some code you found online, it is irresponsible and could certainly have consequences for you. So I think in that sense, even if you're focusing more on the network side of things, you still should have some sort of working knowledge of being able to read code and understand it. You don't need to be a software developer and you don't need to be necessarily writing your own tools or anything like that. But if you download some exploit from GitHub, you should certainly be able to read through it, understand what it's doing before you ever try and run that in a real environment, right? I think that is the, the way it should be done, especially as a professional. Now, with that being said, a lot of people will be asking what kind of languages they should learn to program in for pen testing. Now, and I think, you know, going back to that first argument of knowing your target, of course, there could be a hundred different programming languages you can learn that could be specific to each target that you engage with. And that's different, right? Of course, I don't really have the answer for that because I don't know what sort of applications and things that you might be testing. But I can say overall, in general, if you're just focusing on the network side of things and doing more of those network security assessments, I think the most valuable language that you could learn is Python. Why? Well, Python is very easy to write. It's very easy to read. And a lot of exploits that you're going to be seeing and downloading from the internet and running potentially are going to be written in Python. I think the vast majority of things that you might see on exploit DB or things of that nature are probably written in Python. It's not a language that's very hard to understand. And since it's more of a scripting language, you likely won't be writing these large programs in Python, although you very well could. Uh, it's You're likely just to see it in a lot of these exploit scripts, or maybe if you learn it, you can even write some quick tools for yourself, which could be super useful. Now, I don't have any specific resources that I would recommend to learn the language, unfortunately. Uh, the way I learned programming was through more of a, a college program uh, with a bachelor's degree. And then once I learned a few languages from there, I was able to pick up a language like Python, no problem. But there are countless free resources online to learn a language like Python. And to get to a, a point where you're just proficient in at least reading it and being able to maybe troubleshoot that exploit script or understand what it's exploiting and how it does it, getting to that point shouldn't take you very long. And like I said, there are so many free resources out there that you could use to learn a language like that. Um, it, it should be no problem and should be something you should really focus on if you want to get into pen testing, at least in my personal opinion. And outside of Python, I think a lot of those scripting languages would be good. Something like uh, PowerShell or Bash can be very helpful as well. Things that you're more likely to see on those command lines in your internal pen testing engagements or things of that nature. So those are the three languages that I would really recommend learning. I think that knowing them fairly well could be super beneficial to you. And they really don't take that long to learn. Uh, you really don't need to learn a lot of the complex features of those languages. As long as you can, you know, read through them, understand a general idea of what's happening and be able to troubleshoot some of those basic scripts. I think that's enough to get you by, especially as an entry level pen tester. So those are my thoughts on whether or not you need to know how to code as a pen tester. If you, any of you think differently or agree, let me know down in the comments below. I really would like to see what some other people have to say about this subject. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to drop a like and hit the subscribe button for more content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.